G'day viewers, it's Michael here again and welcome back to Single Racer. Now according to my brother, this is where I should have some sort of visual racing video behind my incessant waffling because I tend to do that a lot and it should make it more entertaining and believe me I've learnt from my mistakes and I hope to do that in the future but unfortunately this won't happen in this video because this will be a set of two on how to get uh, either join sim racing system or how to get it working for someone like my brother who has never used it before and just what you can expect from uh, a beginner's point of view now there are tutorials on how to use it uh, I used Sean Cole's video over at the sim pit which are much better because I don't have the quality of gear to show you in a proper tutorial so this is more from the beginner's point of view on how to join it, but especially how, what to expect when you do your first race. So this will be a two-parter and I'll show you how to join the actual site. And the second video is my first ever race attempt, just so you can see what to expect. And so this is the website here. If you do join, you have to be prepared to do uh, essentially three things that will get you over the line but believe me it is totally worth it but I want to make you aware of those three th things so the first one is by joining up here so here's the uh, the the register section so you just fill in uh, the information if you're not sure what to do you can come over here and here is the full instructions on what to do so it'll give you a rundown of what you need to do in the order you need to do it but one of the other things that you need to do in order to be successful in racing online and I'll show you that in more detail later is to also join uh, the website uh, race department now most of us get our mods from race department so for me that wasn't a problem I was already uh, a member now both these things are totally free so there's no payment of any kind um, they're, they're totally uh, free in both points but if you do download some of the tracks uh, some of the tracks will uh, naturally ask for a donation if you feel that the track is worth it but that's just purely up to you there's no obligation to pay anything in in either sense so let's move on now into uh well no firstly what i'll show you is the one thing that happens is so you register up here but there is a waiting process and I think the waiting process although I can't be sure and I can't confirm that's the case I'm just guessing that the waiting process is because they want to verify through Steam that you do in fact own one of these three games here Seto Corsa, R Factor 2 or Automobilista now I have a, a, a legitimate copy of two of those games so I was able to once you join you there's a short waiting period and they will email you back uh, when you have confirmation that you've joined and because that happens then then you can download the actual app for uh, the game that you have in Steam so whichever game you have or multiple games you can then download the app uh, which is just like any other app or mod for a Seto Corsa uh, and you just install it the same way and it and it runs perfectly fine so let's go to a Seto Corsa now and I'll show you that in more detail okay so here we are in a Seto Corsa now and I'll just refresh uh, that first bit so you just simply go to the sim racing system website uh, click on the register button at the top right corner there'll be uh, after you register there'll be a short waiting process say maybe like a day or two where you get um, you're waiting for the confirmation so you you give them the, your email address and they'll just confirm by email that you're um, fully registered then that allows you to uh, 
download the app, which you can't do before you get that confirmation. And you simply unzip the app and put all the folders that are in the unzipped file into your main Assetto Corsa directory, just like any mod or any other app that you might have done before. So it just works the same way. Then you come over here to General, and most of the apps all tend to fall in this same place that under UI modules at the very bottom here. And see, I have it ticked now, but if I untick that, that's what you would see when you first have, have uh, installed the app. So you'll see Sim Racing System unticked. When you tick it there, you'll get that now extra icon. Now, I'm already logged in, but when you click on the icon here, you'll see this press to enter. So you uh, do that and then you would go up here and enter your details, that the same details that you've done on the website uh, with the, uh, just think of a password that you want to join the website and you'll enter that here as well. And now what you see is the example of all the tabs of all the different racing events that you can enter. There's usually one every hour. And if we go down, if I can see if I can find it, you'll have events run by certain channels as well. So we've got the Aussie Stig here, we've got the Sim Pit, and they'll pick a uh, like a group of tracks and uh, a particular car. Usually, it's one particular car, and you just run this series of events using that one car. And that's how you uh, get to enjoy the actual racing. So as an example here, I'm hoping it's up here. This is why you need to join a race department because here's an example now. So rather than say register, it'll say downloads required. And what it's showing you here is the tracks that you need to enter assuming you wanted to enter all these events now you don't have to you i've just run uh, i in the race that i will show you in the second video i missed the first event but it doesn't matter you can just join for the enjoyment and the competition uh, you could join midway through if you wanted to it just means you wouldn't win the championship but uh you'd still get the enjoyment again, uh, of racing against other people. But here is an example, and I, to me this is done so well. So what it's showing you is it's saying downloads required. That's why they want you to join race department. And when I click on content missing here, if I just... Um, hang on. Oh, sorry, okay, so I click on um, Downloads Required and it will take me to uh, the website, the Sim Racing um, website, and tell me what uh, car, if I need a particular car. So, in other words, if I don't have um, all the, uh, the packs for Assetto Corsa, or in my case with the race that I did in, in, that I'll show you in the second video, I didn't have that particular mod car. So it'll show me the car that I need, plus also any missing tracks. So if you have a track already that is a mod track that you've just downloaded for your own enjoyment, it won't be in the list, but it'll list every other track that um, you need actually i'll stand corrected it could show you the track even if you've got it but if you know you've got it you know you know you don't need to download it so sorry about that it will show you the track of every track that you need in the series but um it's up to you to know then if you have it already installed but you know they're only small files so you could download them all anyway just to double check uh, or in some cases say like with donnington park you might have version one and in order to race the uh, event successfully you'll need the most current version and that can often be a beta version so this is a great example the paul ricard is a beta version hasn't hit version one yet and that's why when you go to race department and join you might get the little thing to say if you want to please donate we want to try and get this to the full version and cost money to produce it that's totally up to you but both things are totally free 
but you will need to join both Sim Racing System and Race Department to do this process. Now, if we go back to here, so here's, here's the first part of it. Now, the, sh the race I'll show you in the second video is this one here, the MTX thing. Now, this is the uh, would be the third race. And if you ever want to know what uh, what uh, the is required, you can just click on these little buttons here and they'll give you a full rundown. So as an example, the time you need to dedicate to this race, which you do have to do, and that's the third thing. So the, the first thing is to uh, join um, a sim racing system. The second thing you need to be willing to do is to join race department, but only purely to download the mods if you need them. And the third thing you need to be prepared to do is, is to be willing to set aside that time. So in my case here, the qualifying length is 10 minutes and the race length is 20. So I have to say, yes, I'm willing to dedicate that 30 minutes aside as well as the lead up time um, to that. But if you race for enjoyment anyway, you usually want to do that anyway, so that's no problem. But in some cases now, I'll see if I can find it. Um, it's good to check like here. Okay, so this is the GT Cup one, and this one is one hour length. So in that case, apart from the fact that I didn't uh, enjoy particularly those two cars. So the M3 up here, I don't particularly like driving. That's just personal choice. And that's purely not because the car's bad or anything against the mod or the, or the actual event or anything. It's just purely because I don't have uh, a top end wheel, which means I struggle with um, twitchy cars. So, uh, you know, you can keep that in mind. You don't have to join any event, every event, anything like that. You can just in, uh, join the one event like I did here, the MTX, and take it from there. So what I suggest here is uh, to join the event, you simply click on the register button. Now, uh, probably the best thing to do that is just say maybe an hour beforehand. And what you can do is if you see here where the mouse is, there's only... Um, there's no people joined up yet, and that's probably because it's too far away from the race. So what you could do in in that regards is, uh, sorry, I'm trying to go to my screen here. If we just go, here is, if you've got something like this, the clock here, or any sort of reminder screen that can give you an alarm to tell you that it's 15 minutes before the race, uh, just a reminder to register, and that's how I do it. And then when you come back, you'll see. So, so in this first event here, you've got 17 people already registered, already ready to race, and you can um, even use that as a guide to whether you want to race or not. So in the second one, you've got the three here. Uh, in the one that I'm in, um, there's no one yet, but it's probably because it's too far out. Okay, now what I'll do is um, please keep in mind I'm a total beginner at this as well. I'm, I've only raced the one event, but I have done it more than once. So I'll explain what happened to me in the sense of what you can see, um, use, and I'll use static screens to help explain this. But it's slightly more common to me because I have been racing quite a lot online and I'm aiming this at my brother who's a total, would be a total beginner to this. So I just want to make you aware of what you will see when you f do your first race. And if you've never raced online, it can seem very strange what actually happens the sequence so i'll just run through that so for the people that have already raced this or raced online um sorry this this will be quite boring but uh, i'll just run through it anyway so what i can't be sure of and what i recommend is so if we imagine that this third one here so i'll bring it to the top 
says one hour to go. What I, what I recommend is that you set your alarm for five minutes beforehand and you can then see how many people have joined. Um, so what I mean by that is if no people have joined, which I'd find very surprising, but just in case there were no, none, you might not want to race against yourself. So you could determine whether that's uh, a factor of joining or not. But it would also mean you come first. So that <laughs> that could be a, a, a plus right there. But uh, what happens, and I just can't remember if, if it's... Uh, goes to zero here and then you have the three minutes but I'd, I'm pretty sure it's three minutes left so in other words as it counts down to zero there'll be a three minute process where you can after you and this and this is after you've registered so you click on this you register with your name uh, you'll pick your car and your car uh, livery color and then there'll be a three minute window where everyone joins just before the race. So you must join in that three minute window. And I am saying this uh, carefully, but my understanding is if you've registered and you don't join, um, there might be a two day penalty where you can't um, join any races uh, for the next two days so don't hold me to that but that's my understanding it's simply it's just like if you booked an appointment at a doctor or somewhere and you didn't turn up uh, they've set you aside so it's the same thing the the hosts are trying to slot you in an order I assume maybe because you're of your ability or something like that and so if you register uh, they naturally want everyone to join so you have you will see a three minute window where you count down uh, and you click on to join so let's go now to the next static screen and I'll show you that what happens there and so it's at this point now that I do want to stress that when I watched Sean Cole's video on how to do all this how to join um, it was a much more in-depth tutorial which I also recommend watching but it made it sound, because you had to get so much information, it sounded like something you'd almost not take on. It just sounded so involved. But the process, uh, once you do it once, is so much easier and it's only difficult to explain it to a beginner. So it might seem uh, overwhelming almost, but believe me, once you do it once, you know exactly what to expect it's like easy as pie, but it's just explaining that first bit. So let's go through those two steps again. You you see the register button on the on the tab that you want to race. You simply click and register your name and I think your password from the Sim Racing System website. And you register. So I've done that. I've got my three minute window where I click on to actually join the race. So that's happened. You can see here I've got um, 2.49 left in that time. I've selected the car, which is the car by default anyway, the, the single car race that you would join. But the main thing is you're picking your livery and your preferred number and then the track you race on. And you can see here what happens is there's a, a slight pause that says, please now wait and we'll connect you up to the race. So here you can see the other people in the event that have also joined. So the next one, I'm using a, a picture viewer here, so I'll just click to the next picture. The next one is you'll see the join button. So you've registered, you're in that three minutes, and now you just simply join, and now you'll connect up to the race. So that's the next bit. Then you end up in the pits here. Now, if you look at the top left uh, of the screen, I can't use my mouse because I'm in the picture viewer, but you'll see the practice, which is not qualifying. So you could just go out, warm up the car, get yourself warmed up, get familiar with the track, uh, load any settings that you have, all that kind of thing. But 
there's this weird thing that happens is because of the way a server works is you have this strange pause between the three events. So practice, um, which you won't get a lot of time anyway, it's, it's simply the time left from that three minutes when you get to join. And then you'll have qualifying, which is in this race the 10 minutes, and you can check by t ticking on the tab there to see how much qualifying time you have. And then you'll have the 20 minute race. So if I click now to the next screen, um, you'll see that I've gone out in practice mode. I've, I've just parked the car, so I'm not in the way, of course, of anyone still racing. But you'll see at the top of the screen above my mirror, the word overtime. And that's the weirdest part if you've never done this before, is what happens is there's this, the delay, you'll get a message on, in my case, I'm using um, Sidekick. So I'll actually see a session ends message in, this, in Sidekick, which is brilliant. And if you don't use Sidekick, you'll just see the overtime message there at the top of the screen, just above the uh, external mirror there. And basically what that's, what that is telling you is the practice has end, um, ended, sorry, and the server will now reset. So there's this strange dead time in between. And what will happen is you'll see the screen itself slowly go black and reload. So we'll go that to that next screen. And now you'll see what happens is you can load your new say like if you had a preset qualifying time and um, an example of that is where you had the lowest fuel possible to do two or three laps to qualify at your best time that is different to your race setup which you might have um, then the full fuel to make sure you can cover the laps so you can do that in this period but what you notice on the top right, uh, sorry, left hand side there is my wheel is grayed out and that's because it's doing a countdown to say we're setting up now the time for qualifying. Here is uh, just the pause to load anything you feel you need to load. And then when we go to the next screen, you see the qualifying, the wheel has gone full red, which means you can start qualifying at any time you like or go back to the bits at any time you like. So that's the next sequence. Then um, you'll get the same thing again happening um, where the qualifying will end. You'll get an overtime message or a session end message, something similar to that. It'll go strangely dark again and you'll get that same pause. So you'll be in the pits again. But the, what happens this time is you'll be in the pits you'll, or you'll be sent back to the pits most likely and in that period where, if I go back one, say, where you've got that wait time again, and you go, but hang on, I'm in the pits. Why, why am I in the pits? Shouldn't I be on the, should I drive out on the racetrack? Or I'm not sure what to do. What the, what the server does is in that period, it sets you up and then you'll find yourself out on the, out on the track in, um, on the start finish line in your position that you qualified in and then you'll be ready to race except that there'll be like maybe 10 to 20 seconds that's a countdown and what you do is you simply wait for just like in formula one or if um, v8 supercars here you'll wait for the red lights to come up so you get you know your typical red lights um red 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 then they go out go and then you start the race so when the qualifying ends and you're sent back here and you go, should I be driving out? No, you don't have to. The server will automatically set you in your position, in your qualifying position on the racetrack ready to go. So don't be alarmed, just sit and let it all happen and then you'll be ready to race. Okay, so now we're back in a set of course for the final wrap up and just one other thing I wanted to mention uh, about this um, app because when I watch Sean Cole's video uh, which is a much more in-depth video if you don't know Sean Cole he he runs the Simpit channel and it's a you know very high-end uh, website and um, or channel sorry and I don't have that kind of gear to do that so my 
uh, tutorial is more based about what to expect from a beginner's point of view, but I highly recommend seeing that video. The other thing from a beginner's point of view is the hosts were extremely helpful. I sent at least three or four emails just to get familiar with what to do at the start. So if you have any questions that I don't cover, just go to their contacts page on the website and they'll help you out, no problems. They told me that they encourage uh, beginners to join, so it's not just the top end guys. If you feel worried about joining as a beginner, what they recommend is when you go out for the qualifying, go out and have fun and get, you know, race around the track so to get familiar with the track, but just don't um, try and set a time. And then what will happen is you'll get put back at the back of the grid deliberately and you can let the others zoom off and race amongst themselves and you can then just slowly go off and enjoy the competition side of it where you're still racing against real people but you're not under the pressure of maybe being in the mid um, car pack and having cars all around you and being so worried about it. Just let them go off and enjoy your own race and what usually happens is uh, I can almost guarantee is three or four of them will crash against each other and you'll get a top 10 win just maybe by default. So enjoy it from that process. So let me run you again through um, a race because I have uh, joined a race today. So you've gone to the website, you've registered, you've waited that little period just for the confirmation. You'll get the confirmation email when you join. Join up with... Um, race department to download any missing tracks. And so you've installed the app into Assetto Corsa. This is what Assetto Corsa normally looks like here with the little red tabs. When you tick the sim racing system after installing the app, you get the icon. Now, when you click to go to a race, the reason you get this is because it's not like a tab, a normal tab in Assetto Corsa that's just another page of the game. You're actually connecting to an internal um, view of the website so we've actually now connected to the website i look here to which race i want to join and what i've done in the next video is i'll show you the magello race but now because it's the next week so it could be the next week or the next couple of weeks i'm i'm not 100 percent sure of that but in this case it was the next week i get the next i get to race the next race at nurburgring so i've put a reminder uh, a little alarm to say five minutes beforehand um, the race is ready to go register to that and um, but the one thing that I want to mention is if you look at the other cars and you feel overwhelmed so I don't have high-end racing gear so I was a little worried about racing these top-end kind of cars because uh, I wouldn't be able to control the car well enough to feel like I could compete but that's where, to me, this is even more worthy to join is because even if you race Mugello once, you can race it over and over again. So when I started, I got, I think, I got 10. So I don't know if that's 10 points or 10 um, something, but you get your initial points. But that doesn't mean you have to not race it again. You can race it over and over if you want. You could race it 10 times and just like iRacing that have that racing ranking, you can build your points up that way. And so you don't even have to race a whole the whole sequence of the calendar. You could just do two tracks if um, I'm very good at the Nordschleifer. If there's a Nordschleifer event, I could just choose that but not race any of the others. So there's nothing forcing you to race the whole event outright. You can just pick and choose any race you want to join. So let me now go to the web site and show you how that works from that point of view. So I've logged in now, but if you weren't logged in, you couldn't view this page, so you just log in again. And here's their version of where you can go to the website and see the daily schedule. So it's the same thing as we just saw in-game. But now I can go to the standings. So I've raced a couple of races. I've got initial points. So how um, do I do? So I'll be taken to this page where I see the rating for the three specific things, road, oval, and off-road. I can then, I know I've only driven a racetrack, so which is road, and um, I can click on my ranking, and when I first raced the single race, I was 2883, I think. 
And because I've done a second race, um, I have uh, added points to my ranking. So if I I will be listed here in in uh, against everyone else. So Sean Cole, the Aussie Stig, they'll all be here in this uh, list, assuming they um, they this is their event. So they might not be in this list, but the events, some of the events, they evented themselves. And if I just do a quick search here, I can also do this where I can go to my name here. Sorry if I do that. Um, and go down and click on my name and I'll get an even uh, more detailed explanation of my the points that I've got for every race that I've entered. Uh, it'll show me the number of starts. I was lucky that I got two top tens um, purely because I was already a reasonably experienced racer, so I was happy about that. And there's my incident rating, which was, I knew that was going to happen because I had no idea what was going on initially so I knew I would get caught up in some sort of um, uh, accident which is what happened which you'll get to see in the next race and but that I'm hoping that'll slowly go down as I get more and more confident with how the whole thing process works so I highly recommend it it's totally enjoyable the website if you've got any questions will do their utmost to help you to join and I recommend beginners join as well so if you like that, um, please check out my next um, video, which it will be the race itself, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, see ya.